This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here, video producer, podcast producer, and lover of anime. Uh, with us, we got a full house with us. I'm excited. I love when we get everybody in the house like this. Let's just go down the line here. Dutters is with us, sales and marketing person and ball bouncer. You're, you're bouncing over at Scare House and the Rogue Laser Grounds nowadays. Yeah. Something else we're announcing tomorrow. Oh, I think I saw. Did, did somebody get a pre email on that? Because yep. somebody with a hard hat sent me a thing and I was like, oh. The thing with the 18 and overs. Oh, oh, now it's on. Yep. Also, producer Missy hanging out in the back back there. We ran out of microphones and stuff, but she's there. <laughs> She'll yell. She'll yell if she really has something to say here. I, I can. No, no, don't do that. It's a VT <laughs> show. Uh, <laughs> so I considered Skyping her in actually because we can do that just that just to have that audio feed in case she really needed to say something which i'm sure i'll get messy or she's gonna run up and steal from katie also with us he is the guys that grew over big bank international esquire john chichilla is with us how's it going hey rocking out over there and of course our guest this week uh joining us i've known this guy for a while yeah a long time damn i'm thinking about it. it's a long time <laughs> I, I, I am very old. <laughs> You're very old. Also, I've been around pro wrestling way too long, too. Uh, Chris Maverick is with us. Hey. Former pro wrestler. Yeah. Although yeah. you made an appearance last month. Yes. A special appearance. Out of retirement. Out of retirement. for. I mean, you didn't wrestle, technically. No, no I was, uh, I was just there for... Managerial, managerial capacity. Purpose. I did wrestle last uh, six months ago for, um, for Black Diamond and for this weird uh, Guinness... Book of World oh Rec- yes, <laughs> I. So here's the fun point. I I was there filming it, and I probably didn't know you were there, right? Because literally, like, there were 109 people across three rings in this. In no, this we were building. higher than that, weren't we? 100. And... 109 is the number I've heard. Maybe it was I've been I don't told. even remember. It was a but, lot. But I'm filming on the one side of the ring. I set up cameras across the other side of the ring, and literally, if you were there and I didn't catch you on my side, like, I probably had no idea mm-hmm. that you were participating in this, <laughs> let alone the fans, which were outnumbered. <laughs> it was it was an insane thing, but yeah. That, so, former pro wrestler, modula, an occasional here or there. Of appearance. course, uh, the, the web comic with the uh, uh, Hel- cosmic, cosmic Hellcats. Cosmic Hellcats web comic on indefinite hiatus. We might finish it one day. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, you left that cliffhanger. We left it. We we we, um, we did nine and a half years. And we were we had intended it to be ten years. Yeah. And the guy I work on on it with. And I both got really, really busy. You're in the final stretch. Yeah, we got really, really busy. And for about two months, we ran fill-in strips of just you know one one panel fill-in strips that we had, that we'd had. And we'll we'll get back to it as soon as we're busy. And then we ran out of those. <laughs> so so we actually haven't updated in about three or four months since about the since the end of last year. And the last original, um, we were doing this thing. We were um, we were doing a very obvious Game of Thrones parody this year. Mm-hmm. And we killed a character on our last trip. And there was reasoning for it. And I know what it is in my head. And we just never got back to it. So so you did. You did. So you're like the Game of Thrones that like said, hey, we're going to take a year off. Yeah. Before yeah, we, we finish and then, this And then thing. take two. And, and then take two. Yeah. Or five. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Sure. <laughs> no problem. Uh, geez. Go check it out. Uh, just a... Tweet for, uh, or I'm sorry, a search for Cosmic Hellcats. You'll, it'll come up there. It's CosmicHellcats.com. Yeah. Well, that's also easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but photographer and other... Uh, photographer, of podcaster, things, artist, English blogger. Student, I've, I've, I think I was reading your movie reviews lately on your <laughs> blog. Uh, so a little bit of everything mm-hmm. uh, going on over there. So 
Uh, good to have you on. I, again, it's been it's been ages since you've been on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, normally, we have you on the Wrestling Mayhem show, but I think you know more of this stuff than you do wrestling these days. By far. So it makes more sense. By far. So I'm we have other people. Also other. artists coming on later for Wrestling Mayhem show tonight. So, uh, but good. Well, yeah. I actually have something. Before, listen, I can listen to last week's show. I have come <laughs> to. I, here's my main reason for being here. I'm, let's see if I can get my phone open. I have come to change your life for you. Oh, no. Is this your awesome thing? No. It, well, I mean, it could be, but no. There you go. <laughs> what is... What, whoa, 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 whoa. What is that? Is it... Wait, is that CarPlay on your phone? That is a picture of CarPlay on my phone. Oh, okay. Because you, were, <laughs> cause you, cause you were complaining that you couldn't take a picture of your... You wanted to prove that yeah. you had CarPlay. Yeah. So how? so here's here's the trick. If you've got... Have your, an Android phone? No. <laughs> no. I, I, please. I, I have this phone. If you have CarPlay in your car, yes, um, and you ever want to do it again, so in fact, here are here's the directions to your studio. Um, okay. If your phone's connected and you screenshot your phone, it takes a screenshot of both your phone and the CarPlay. Like dashboard. it does with the watch. Yeah, that's right. See, I thought I tried that and I didn't get it. Yeah, it takes it takes both uh, it it takes both both shots and Screens. it just saves them next to each other. Yeah, it, it does the same thing with the Apple Watch. Nice. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it would do that, and I and. I was pretty sure I tried it. Were you connected over Bluetooth or over the wire? Wire. Okay, then it, that's how I do mine. Okay. I don't know if it works on the Bluetooth connection, but it works on but huh. it works on the wire connection. I will. I I'll, I will have plenty more rental cars in the next two months. Well, five right, if you more. Go s- plug your phone into my car. You could try it right now. <laughs> <there. laughs> <laughs> all right, we got a. All right, we're gonna have it on the scene here. After that, we're gonna make, take a little uh, uh, break here. But anyways, uh, by the way, everybody says hi, everybody except Dutters. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> little butt. Then I won't plug Riz Plays Games. Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast where I will plug other things, uh, including go check out everything at awesomecast.com. And hey, I finally fixed awesomecast.net. <laughs> Stupid A records that I kept forgetting were broken. Uh, you can subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app, watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And also, and, and some people have been sending me, I think they did for Wrestling Mayhem Show, um, they've been taking video of this actually working for them um on their devices but you can ask your google home and your amazon echo to play the awesome cast um ask your google home to play awesome cast on google music podcast or ask your amazon echo the a word uh to play awesome cast on tune in and you can get your episodes there through those devices on whatever toaster that's installed in a refrigerator <laughs> that might have it these days right um and of course you can catch us every tuesday live at 7 p.m eastern time uh, right here on Facebook Live and in the Sorgatron Media um, feeds on Twitch and uh, and Periscope and YouTube and everything. But again, that that live chat room is over on the Facebook page for Awesome Cast. So please follow that so you're with us and a part of the conversation there. Uh, just like Crazy Krause and Dave Potter of the Tiny Shard Podcast and Riz's. Uh, in there whether we want him to or not also thank you to our <laughs> uh, streaming partners our friends at rivers edge pgh.com that carry us at 7 p.m east wait wait no that's that's where we do this, this show no they carry us saturday mornings at 9 a.m uh over there and i know that the website seems to be down lately but i think they're tuning in and everything should still be training uh streaming too so that you can also ask uh amazon to to uh stream the river's edge on there as well on the middle's edge uh, also, the 405media.com carries us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern. And if you have any questions, if you want to uh, find out about, uh, hang out with us in the studio, uh, be part of our studio audience, or have any uh, questions about advertising, hit up producer Missy at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Or you can support the show in other ways at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Like our good friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller, John Dickey DeGore, and John Carmen, who actually will be joining us next week on the show. And our friend at the fan of the show, $1 level, Michael Fedor, who is the longest Patreon supporter amongst them. Again, you guys, if you can benefit from this show, want to help keep the lights on here in the studio, uh, go hit that up at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Okay, so we got, uh, we wow, you guys have pods and cubes and things in here. Uh, <laughs> um, I, th- th- let's go with uh, Chilla. What's going on with the fire cube? I got to see one of these lately. You, you got to see one? Uh, well, yeah. Cause Where I, did you see it? Well, I, when I was picking up my MacBook, I'll talk about later. Like, I got to see all the displays, and there's like, hey, here's all the Amazon stuff. Here's all the Google Home stuff. And it was like, oh, there it is. It's a nice little companion cube. It is a nice little companion cube. So I picked up the fire cube, which I think, was it Alex? Someone someone recommended a while I think back. it was Alex. Um, I 
picked it up primarily because I wanted to see what I could do with it. Also, because it acts as like another A train endpoint um, with the HDMI. So it's like a combination to me of uh, of a dot combined with a Fire Stick. Um, and I wanted it to control my home theater. So as we were talking last week, I got the basement finished, the home theater equipment's all in, and I needed something to control those devices, much like I control my devices upstairs. So got the device plugged in, everything was going great until I said, hey, A-Train, turn off the TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And it turned off the TV, and then upstairs, Carla went to say, hey, A-Train, turn off the TV. And the TV downstairs then turned off. Because it overrode any any commands for the TV that were originally set up for the Harmony equipment were now primarily set for anything Amazon, anything and, and everything that wasn't Amazon stopped working. So this is where we find out that the uh, Chilla Tech Home has is a very delicate ecosystem. <laughs> so um, now that needs that they, that there needs to be balance in the in the uh, home ecosystem force that is uh, Chilla Tech House. And I'm wondering what would happen if I got this is this is my thought process. I wonder what would happen if I got a second fire. Cube. <laughs> <laughs> um, we so just stack things. So the interesting thing is I read through the harmony plug-in information or what do they call it skill and it's just 50 people in the last two months complaining that they either got a fire stick or a fire cube and it's broken their harmony um interestingly what they didn't figure out and i should probably post on the skill is you can create custom um routines that are activated with whatever command you put in there so now i have a train power on and a train shut it down and that turns everything on upstairs and then the fire cube has retained the turn the tv on the cool thing about the um the cube is you can program it because it's plugged i have it plugged directly into my receiver and it knows you actually tell it what's plugged into every hdmi component in your receiver and every hdmi input in your tv and you can say switch to Xbox, switch to PlayStation, switch mm. to switch to switch, um, switch to TiVo, whatever. And it completely just interestingly enough, it mutes the stereo while it does it, because then Alexa's talking through. Our, oh, sorry. She's talking through all of the <laughs> different things. Um and it works, it works extremely, extremely well. The only thing that I don't like, and I think there's a, a way to override it, is when you tell her to turn on the TV, no matter what you were doing when you left, she always defaults back to the fire cube. She'll reset all your components in your TV Ooh. back to wherever the cube was. So once it comes on, then you have to say switch to TiVo, or you can say switch to cable, or switch to Xbox, whatever you... However, you have the command set up, but um, so far, pretty darn impressed. It's four Ks of fun. If you have a four K <laughs> TV, four Ks of fun. <laughs> um, so Netflix is in four K. They even have like a little part of their store that says these are four K enabled, um, and they're bringing more importantly to me, they're bringing back YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, if if, I, if you saw the news this week, uh, Google and Amazon have come to an agreement. So. Uh, Google's going to pick up some Prime stuff with Google Home, and Amazon, in turn, is going to pick up YouTube to start, and then YouTube TV after that. So, so far, super impressed. I don't even pick up the remote. I do everything voice command, and unless I need to navigate a menu and really set something up. Mm-hmm. Um, works extremely, extremely well. And can't wait for the YouTube voice search and whatnot. Awesome. I think related to that, Mav, you have... Uh uh, kind of a, another uh, a device you can talk to yeah, that uh, you want to talk about. And, and see, I, I've been fascinated just listening to you talk about that because I have, well, I have HomePod. First of all, mm-hmm. how many Fire Cubes do you have? You said your your wife uses one from upstairs. No, no, so we have we have an Amazon, we have 
a, a dot, an echo dot. Okay, yeah, the dot. And then in addition to the dot, we have a what's called the harmony, mm-hmm. and it's just like I've an got, infrared repeater. I've got two of those. For yeah. some reason, I remember when Dutters, <laughs> I remember when Dutters had a dot in it, and the relationship didn't end very well. No, it, was it ended no. up with me having another dot. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you adopted it. Basically, basically, it went into a foster home. Yes. That Chile is holding for uh, t- tech you can talk to, right, Dutters? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Chile's home for wayward tech. <laughs> That's so, kind of mine. Yeah. I get the cast off so, from Chilla's house. So we have, yeah. but we also have a home pod upstairs. Yeah. Mm. That's primarily for Apple Music interfacing, which Amazon now picked up too. So yes. I can get all my, uh, my Apple Music over Amazon. So you can get the Apple Music on, on the, on the Echo Dot. Now. Yes. All right. So this, so here's, here's the, the, the craziness of, of my world. So I've got, I've got two Harmony, um, Whatever they call them, mm-hmm. uh, I've, I've got the one with the touch screen, and I've got one that's just you know that the I mostly app and the infrared repeater. Yeah, I've got okay, I've got yeah. infrared repeators in the bedroom and in the t- the TV room. Okay. Jeez. and then I've got um, and this extends uh, for the, the infrared repeater it, like extends like using the remote, it goes to the device where it needs to. Well, like right. so with Harmony, you can use their physical remote, which mm-hmm. will also which will do actual radio frequency to the infrared repeater, right. or you can use their app on your phone. Right, and so, the app on the phone will. So right there, those are all the devices in my house that I could turn them on from through here if I really wanted to, and my cat would be very confused. <laughs> and then they have the thing too that the Harmony sits on that will actually make it what is it Zigbee aware or something like yeah, that? like or Z Wave one of the other and I, and one I, of the other ones. I don't have that. Okay, I don't have that either. So what I'm mm-hmm. doing is I've got the I've got the Harmony repeater or whatever they call it in the TV room. I've got another one in my bedroom. I've got the extension remote in my bedroom, and I've got the the big giant remote in, in the in the TV room. Mm-hmm. Um, I use my phone, and then I have three Apple TV, well, three Apple TV four four Ks, whatever Jeez. it's called. I'm a, I'm a crazy person. You said you, you said which show do I want to be on? Uh, so I was talking I, with friends of mine recently, and they were like. Oh, who has a TV anymore? Nobody has a TV anymore, and I'm like, I have, God, I I think, have five. I think our new <laughs> show is 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 Chilla and Mav's house at Tech. Yeah, yeah, we like, should do we should do house tours. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Well, well, somebody asked me, you know, how do you, how how do you have five TVs? Like, do you have kids? No, it's just me and my wife. And it's like, well, I mean, there's six if you count the one that's in my car. But <laughs> 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 yes, I have television in my car. Um, I mean, I can't see it. It's only in the back seat for the children. I don't have, but <laughs> <laughs> but. For guests, yeah, maybe you'll you'll kick up some lift. Well, when, I, when I go on a trip or something, yeah, you know, you we, know. Can, we can watch DVDs. But um, so I've got the the Apple TVs in um, um, my dining room, in the bedroom, and in and in the TV room. I've got a HomePod in the TV room and in the bedroom. I don't have one downstairs, and it's great because I, I also have you know Hue lights and IKEA tray free mm-hmm. lights and you know any Zig, you know Zigbee. Yeah. Um, the problem is when you're in a room that's too far away from the home pods, turning the lights on and off means you either have to yell or like, you know, on talk to your watch, watch with like, like a weirdo. Um, so <laughs> it's not that weird. No, it's not terribly weird. I use the watch. You know what? I, I use the watch. If I'm carrying groceries in the house to turn on the porch light, to turn on the lights. Yes. Turn on the porch light and the inside light. Uh, so my inside lights are on, um, are on, um, infrared um proximity sensors okay. so it's fine it's the porch light which um also is nice because you can program the porch light through apple home kit to when your phone enters within 150 yards so as you're driving home you can just make it come on okay which is which is what i do that's interesting because that probably wouldn't be as much of a problem as I don't like want to turn it off when I, I don't want to turn things off when I leave. I do it, not do that. If you, there's you other people in the house, then I'm, yeah. I'm leaving and the whole house is you, just shutting down. Yeah, you can, me. but I opt not to do that. Yeah. I only do the turn on. Okay. I do turn on when my wife or I come home. Okay. Um, which is neat if you're actually home already. And it's like, oh, look, the porch lights just, I guess, steps on the way home. You mm-hmm. know, so, so I know, but, <laughs> you but get a warning shot, you get a warning <laughs> shot. But, um, but, but, the, but here's, here's my question. Mine flash if you've red. got the, if you've got the home pod and you've got the, the Amazon ecosystem, how do you? How does it work for controlling? So I assume the HomePod's not in the same room as the dot. No, they sit right next to each other. Oh, okay. See, because because my thing is, I want to be able to like, I don't well, want to spend another three hundred dollars to have like have a device in the bathroom. I don't care that much. <laughs> so you could pick up like a thirty dollar dot. That's what I want to do. But if I do that, will it get conf- will it confuse the ecosystem of when my lights are on? No, because so for the Amazon stuff, you have to. You know how when you add 
typically like when I added a Lutron light switch, I went to the Lutron app and added it and right. then told it to add it to HomeKit. Yeah. On the so Lutron's controlling a portion of that. Or okay. Harmony's or controlling Harmony, a portion or, or, or whatever. So a careful ecosystem, one ecosystem is said. reaching into the other ecosystem to do some of that work. So on the Amazon side, you have to add the skill. Okay. So I had to add the Lutron skill and the Harmony skill and all of those things. So if I put a if I put a dot in the bathroom, yep. it will it does <laughs> yeah, hey, this is sometimes you want to take a shower if and you, I don't, put and a you dot don't want to stop listening to the awesome cast. Yeah, yeah, yep. you know. Yeah. I so mean, yeah. cuz that happens. I'm still just dragging uh, my have, phone We only in have with one home pod. Okay. And we the home pod sits next to an echo because there were some things we had Wemo switches. Okay. And Wemo didn't have a bridge yet. So I think they do now. They do. I have yeah. that. Okay. Um <laughs> There were certain things that you had to use right. Amazon for that I couldn't use with the HomePod. Now everything's ubiquitous. Well, Harmony is still not yeah. HomeKitable. Mm. But you know, here, here's, if you have a computer somewhere in your house that's running Mac OS and it's just on all the time, you can install HomeBridge, which Bridge, is what I do. Yes. And HomeBridge is awesome. You a little bit of programming knowledge and you can you can make your own switches so that you can turn. So that's how I turn my TV on and off by voice if I want okay. to. I, uh, um, though, to be fair, voice control to turn the TV on and off got silly after. I mean, like I, I liked it for when I set it up. But realistically, I don't do that very you know, much. For, so we, do so we don't even have the remotes out anymore because the only thing we have is the cable box remote out because switching between like the Apple TV, the Xbox, the cable box and getting the TV HDMI ports and because we have a stereo with 5.1 surround. Right. Getting all of that synchronized for a five-year-old and a wife wasn't working well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why we have it set up and then she doesn't even have to pull out her phone to open up the harmony app to... how she how she changing channels she uses just the cable box remote oh you're changing okay so yeah so, so turn 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 the tv on turn the tv off turn the xbox on go to apple tv whatever you want then you're using primarily that controller remote for that device mm -hmm. the xbox you're yeah if you're gonna play a game Obviously, you need the controller the anyway remote. Um, so that is a, a little preview into. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys, we're stealing the entire oh, yeah. show. Gotta, this is this is a preview of your of your guys' new podcast. Uh, yeah. So this old so house. Anyways, this new house. Yes, this new doing house. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you would say we get to our awesome thing. I'm glad I paired you guys together. Um, we don't know if you guys did the show together, but I think you guys are good friends now. Uh, <laughs> Katie, did you follow in that? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I stopped. What is your new thing? Actually, this is kind of connected. If it's the oh, thing yeah, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, this is what you get. By the well, way, this is the future of of when that stuff doesn't work. Speaking yeah, I don't. Of that I don't know if you saw ecosystem. the uh, new Child's Play trailer, but mm -hmm. um, Chucky controls your connected devices in yeah. the new Child's Play trailer. That's terrifying. Yep, buddy connected. Uh, also, the eyebrows are not great. <laughs> <laughs> but voiced by Mark Hamill. Yeah, which is great. That is good. So on your connected uh, Buddy connected app, you can play games with Buddy. Uh, you can draw with Buddy. Uh, you have a Buddy drone. You have Buddy video. Uh, buddy, I can't read this bottom one. And Buddy phone. Oh, yeah. Buddy cloud. That's what that's supposed to be. <laughs> and Buddy phone. So you're able to use all of these devices. Um, so essentially, it sounds like Chucky is going to hack into all of your smart devices. Oh, boy. <laughs> in the next movie. So just a heads up in the future. Oh, boy. <laughs> when a doll stabs you i mean it's only a matter of time that you know all of our connected devices get all final destination on us mm -hmm. right so. <laughs> they revolt <laughs> uh that killer dot is not at my house anymore no <laughs> there you go it's sorry like, chill. get it all away i'm not worried about <laughs> privacy i'm worried about chucky coming and using it against me <laughs> so i mean i mean this is kind of like um I, I remember there was a like i think it was a made for tv movie that had um uh, the guy from Mind About You was in it. Paul Reiser? Paul Reiser. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it was, I think it was called The Tower. And it was like a precursor to um, what, what, is, what became the, the Rock movie last year, uh, Skyscraper. But it was like, you know, it was an automated system. I found it on YouTube. Like, you can find it on YouTube. And I watched back a little bit of it, like, recently. And it was like that, you know, The Tower was trying to kill them with, like, you know, the, the HVAC unit and the, and the, and the uh, 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 elevators and things like that. So, but and this is like 1991, maybe. So, what was the movie with the weather where they were controlling the weather? Geostorm. Geostorm. That Geostorm. one. It just came out a little bit ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, that disappeared. 
Just, that was pretty bad. That's that one of those where, like, there's a plane falling out of the sky right before <clears throat> I had to take a flight somewhere. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Back when that was a problem for me. Geostorm, um, a two and a half hour movie where there is no Geostorm. Yeah. Really? <laughs> you would think with the title what? Geostorm, it would all be about a Geostorm. The Geostorm never comes. Well, there's this later trailer when it's actually about like the guy and his and his wife that I think works for the president or something, which is completely out of Independence Day. Um, but, you know, or, and he like, it was an astronaut or something. It's horrible. Anyways, film. anyways, my awesome thing of the week actually is um, I begrudg- begrudgingly had to get a MacBook Pro. Uh, this past week. It's never a happy occasion because that means, damn it, I need to go out of my way and get a MacBook Pro. And if I'm going to get one, it's you go all out because it will last me another five years because they have like the last two times I've gotten a Mac, right? That's why I drop $2,500 on mm-hmm. a MacBook because it will be my core thing for a long, 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 long time. And I need to, I need to spec it out. But, um, and, and also begrudgingly that, <laughs> that I have um, Touch Bar. Which is awesome. Which is actually pretty awesome. It shouldn't be. It seems like the stupidest thing yeah. in the world. And I, so I, I buy computers the exact same way as you. I'm yeah. Bu- if I'm buying this, um, if I'm buying a computer, it's going to last me five years. And which also means that my, my wife's um, personal computer, she has a, she has a computer from work, but her home computer is always whatever I had five years ago. Right. That's, um, and she, cause she doesn't so care. Um, I mean, for web browsing, she, you know, if she needed to do something important, she'd use a work computer. So I did the same thing. $2,500. I guess I'm spending money on this. And the touch <laughs> bar, me. this is the stupidest thing. I was, expe- I was excited about USB-C. I was not excited about the touch bar. This is the stupidest not, thing ever. I need adapters for until, everything. For everything. But, it, but I'm, I'm excited about the future of USB-C. So, and then, the, but then it came out and the touch bar amazing and i don't know if it's because you know it's been you know further in like i opened photoshop and i responded to that and i'm kind of figuring like okay what is functional on this like things like being on in final cut and you can see the entire bar like your entire edit bar and and move along that in the touch bar the scrub bar and audition the, the scrub bar and yeah the scrub bar mm-hmm. um there was even like you get the you get the scrub bar when you're on itunes listening yes. to a podcast like it starts it starts popping up in in, in like extra ways and then there's like touch id although for some reason my card that i have on apple pay on my phone will not recognize as one i can use on my computer i don't have that problem i'm also confused Mm. why i need to read i thought i guess i guess it's per phone um so they don't yeah that gets stored in a secured enclave and it's not allowed it's not on it's not allowed to be backed up it's not allowed to go anywhere okay because even if, if you add the you have to add cards separately to your watch. You're not even allowed to add them. That's right. Really? Well, well but you have. To, it, but it's weird because you add them through the watch app on the phone. Yeah, but yeah. you can't add them via like they but, don't. You can't sync them over. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. But anyways, so that's interesting. You know, having the Touch ID plus it's already synced with my watch and stuff. So like, I have two ways for it to pop up, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um. But no, really functional, and uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's it's you know, big complaints about USB C, just having to find adapters for all mm-hmm. my specialized Black Magic hardware that needs uh, lightning ports. We were, we were going over that, and there's just like I can't just buy one thing that has like three lightning ports in it or something. Um, but that's always been a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, remember the FireWire days? Oh, the FireWire <laughs> days. I was looking at my camera, my, my higher end camera that I use. And I'm like, this has like a FireWire 400. And how old is this camera? <laughs> but it's like the best camera I have. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not 4K or anything, but it's it's great for for all my pro shoots and everything. But anyways, um, yeah, that's kind of my thing, which means uh, this this podcast will get out a lot faster, and I'll get a little bit more sleep <laughs> <laughs> as a result. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, thanks to producer Missy for um, completing the plug me along to get the get the thing with everything and not because I was I was kind of in the oh I'll get a Mac Mini spec that out later I'll get like a MacBook for now or something and just to, to be a portable thing that's still going to be at least better than what my uh, old MacBook Pro was. Basically, the MacBook Pro, which we've pulled the battery out, we've replaced everything. I broke the screen again earlier this year. Um, um, it started just not processing those multi-cam edits that I do for wrestling mm-hmm. and then even the other client stuff too. And it was just like, okay, we got a problem here. So, but it's still hooked up and it's an extra workstation. So people can get lower end stuff uh, in a Mac environment here. Cause we do have some um, apprentices uh, coming in here on Thursdays and learning what we're doing here around Sorter Cut Media. So, so that's my thing and I'll be grunting about it probably every time I need to get an adapter for uh, USB-C or, 
get the bill to pay it off. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, it is. If you got the money to spend on it, I mean, I, I still, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't seen a Windows computer that has the build as mm-hmm. these things, right? So, um, and that's been the big thing. I, I mean, Katie, you just had yours replaced just a little bit ago. I see you still have um, um, usable ports and an SD card slot, and I'm really jealous of that. Yeah, look at yeah, my ports. Look at you. I, I'll tell you. I mean, and, and I didn't think to to write it down. I use um, I have a USB C dock, mm-hmm. which I found is actually really good. Um, I was annoyed by the lack of you know Everything. expandability for the first week. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I like the idea of USB C. I like the idea that I have power anywhere I want and that mm-hmm. I have theoretically, eventually, any peripheral anywhere I want. Mm-hmm. Obviously, nothing is USB C yet. Yeah. It's better than it was eight months ago when I bought mine. So it, you know, it's getting there. But um, it turns out I never plug an SD card in on the road. I mean, I see. Well, I like, well, no, like, well, I mean, when you're, so you're talking about from your cameras. Mm-hmm. See, I always, like, what I always did was um, I would, Pull a card from a camera. Mm-hmm. For for one thing, they're all compact flash for me, so the, the building was never and working I'm SD anyway. Cards, so yeah. yeah. So, but I'd pull a card from a camera, and I would um, if I, I might preview it on an iPad. Mm-hmm. But the editing I was always doing back in my hotel room anyway, mm-hmm. even even when I was on the road. Yeah. So I don't need I it, I don't need to be able to do it in the field. Mm-hmm. So I can have it. I can go to a hotel room, um, which is what I did this last week. Um, I was I was in DC all week. So we recorded a show out there, and I just had the dock set up on the desk they give you in the hotel room the entire time. And then when I, you know, when I was out and about, I used my laptop. And then you come home at the end of the day, you plug it in, and and all the, and everything was already plugged into it. The card reader was already plugged into it. Um, my soundboard was already plugged into it. Mixing, yeah. you know, all the mics. So. so anyway, I mean, I can plug cameras in, but it's a lot slower because they're all like USB two. So yeah, you know, and so. that's yeah. Anyways, hey, you know, uh, we're a bunch of geeks here, as you've found out over the last <laughs> half hour, uh, in different various ways, and uh, we're here talking tech week to week, and what could be nerdier and geekier than tech? How about Dungeons and Dragons, guys? Better yet, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast with original music. That's right, our friends at Bardic Mystery uh, Tour regale the crowd with tales of rock bands and bards on tour they kick indoors and solve mysteries and write original songs for this and they're even putting some of that up on band camp as well and you can uh, see that all over and subscribe and, and check out um all of their mysteries all of their stories again this is something that helped me on some of those long rides that we were talking about earlier uh, uh back from dayton just a month ago uh listening to this bardic mystery tour.com guys they do voices and everything like they're they are full-on production on this thing and it's a lot of fun to listen to check them out a part of the sorgatron media network right here bardic mystery tour.com let's take a quick peek uh let's see we're going to roll right through these, hopefully, here. First of all, uh, Brandon pulled this up. I think we were talking about this beforehand. Um, apparently, you can return your Amazon items at the Kohl's store starting in July. So the evil empire of Amazon has expanded. I mean, this is going to be... I mean, the, <clears throat> the interesting thing that they had in that, in one of the articles that I read, it's it's there, Kohl's is also going to have a whole home automation area mm. where you can see what kind of devices of... are those. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but this has become common, right? Like these are the like I, I you know, Bed Bath and Beyond is going to have their Beyond section, right? I mean, that's going to have this kind of stuff. It, it, it's 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 standardized a bit more, unless you look at Chilla's house. Um, <laughs> you know, that somebody can say, "Hey, I'm going to buy Amazon things and." Grandma's going to have the thing set up and everything. So it's kind of the next step to get out there. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Potter, um, you were talking about TVs a little bit there uh, uh, before Chilla. And how about Sony's 98-inch 8K TV, which will cost $70,000 um, with 4K. He says, Mav and I are getting three of them. You're getting oh. three. <laughs> Between the two of you. <laughs> Start a collection now, right? Well, if I sold my house... I could afford the TV. I'm not sure where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but, what, but what I'm working this out. Strap it to the back of the car, like <laughs> like our like our, the, our friends of Volvo bought. And what content are you going to get for it <laughs> to play on it? Like, <laughs> yep. Future proof. Yeah, <laughs> future proof. Not house proof, but future proof <laughs> at the very least. 
Jeez, I, you know, and I love looking at the pictures of these. Like, I was amazed when I picked up some some of these OLEDs for like the one behind me. I already lost one of the bottoms to it, but it's just like, hey, here's a, you spent seventy thousand dollars on this TV. We're not gonna give this little plastic tripod for you to put it uh, on. I'm, I'm sure nothing bad will happen to this <laughs> thing. Jeez. But uh, but I guess most people like hang it up or something. Yeah, right? I'd mount it to my wall, but I don't know that I have a ninety-eight inch wall. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, so it's hard. To, it's car. hard to get wall space in a in a Pittsburgh housing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, I was like, my house is not a bad size, but no room is large, right? You know, in comparison to like you know thinking back home in the middle of nowhere. Well, I looked, I looked at because I put a sixty-five in my basement, and I looked at going seventy-five. And I wanted it so the center of the TV was on the center of my my viewing from the couch. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like it mounted, like, above a, a um, fireplace or anything crazy like that. I feel like I'm in the front seat of a movie theater. So I, I actually got the couch put and, and looked at where the TV would be. And if I went 75 inches, it would have had to have been mounted, like, like nine inches off the floor to, to get the center in proportion to where everything was it just didn't make sense Hor horizontal space was my problem yeah. um i i have um i have 60 because i measured and for the there was no wall big enough for 65 inches like um whatever the whatever the, without interruption of you know a post or mm -hmm. a window or there was there was just nowhere for me to put it so mm -hmm. we have a 60 inch television because that's what would fit yep. and in comparison Dutters and i have two TVs yeah. in our houses. <laughs> we do. It's true. I do have an LCD, but but there's, there's a lot of tubes. Actually, I, I, was, I was playing I was playing Zelda on the old tube TV and GameCube. <laughs> I do still have one day. tube television still connected. I have a collection of them in the basement the because at the time we were using them for monitors for the studio mm -hmm. in the old studio, and and some are very large. And somebody was like, "Hey, I'm moving. I don't want this TV anymore." I'm like, "I'll take it." And now I have a couple very large like. 27 30 inch tvs which don't sound like a lot but when they're a tube that's a they're problem really heavy yeah, that's a problem i mean if you want more and you feel like cleaning out my basement or my garage i can't offer you some my wife no, would be very happy no and you power it up and the, all the lights will dim <laughs> um you know that kind of thing hey um we had one here from Podner. i want to get uh, one last one here for the these and these are all stories that were uh, uh, submitted at the awesome cast facebook group as well but dave Podner also says running related tech just in time for the pittsburgh marathon may 5th to show his runs and uh, only partially bore people he uses the relive app the app can uh let me click on the right thing here the, the app can track you using another app to track the runs and uh link the data together so he's kind of pulling it all together here unfortunately the video does not pull up the way this is the problem of doing it on an ipad oh there you go there's i don't know it's just pictures of of running i guess uh but no it's kind of a social app uh that you can do and also while we're at it and talking about running um oh that's cool it, it does a 3d you guys can see on the video, it does a nice 3D run of uh, of, of what you ran as well mm -hmm. uh, with everybody that you have linked to over there. Wow, that's that's, that's a cool little video that you could do on there, like kind of a 3D uh, topography kind of uh, deal. So that is the Relive app, and while we're at it, just a backdoor to plug our friend Zach Rizza over at CrowdRise.com for the Pittsburgh Marathon. He is. Um, uh, he's at $270 of his $500 goal. He's doing the Pittsburgh Marathon, and uh, this is his, his third year doing it, and I believe he's made his goal uh, the last two years. So let's make it three for three, guys. Awesome cast. Uh, people, get out there and help out Riz. I'm sure he'll be on Wrestling Man. I'm sure I'll plug in that later, too. So, um, so with that... You know what's good after a run? You know, a good bit of pizza with our friend Slice on Broadway, right, Chilla? Exactly. Thank you for that segue. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here. The majority of the run of this show, to be honest, if, I, if my math is correct. Uh, but, of course, they're here in Beachview, right up the street from our studio here on the tracks, uh, as well as in Carnegie, PA, if you're heading out to the airport just off the exit right there, out in the East End, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. I know Dave Potter was out there. He sent us a picture over on the Wrestling Mayhem show of him uh, gently 
opening the door with his foot. It's a gag you'd have to watch Wrestling Mayhem Show to understand. Uh, but... <laughs> Sorry, inside joke for the wrong podcast. Uh, but anyways, go check them out. Supporting us, delicious stuff here, uh, keeping us. Um, so we're we're not podcasting on an empty stomach here, and we're well fueled, fueled with our our pepperoni and our meats and cheeses uh, as well. Sliceonbroadway.com, PJ's underscore slice on the Twitter on the Twitter. Yeah, the Twitter? that works for me on the Twitter. And uh, please support the people that support this fine, fine podcast um let's see what we got here <laughs> um katie I, I think we both um caught the attention of this this is your wheelhouse in in several different ways oh yeah uh this this one uh about the uh porn hub social media manager yeah uh so there was an uh i lost out there it is um it was mashable who uh interviewed the port one of the porn hubs uh social well their social media manager and she was talking about her job and how she's very, you know, authenticity is a big deal to her and like what it's like to essentially do social media for a porn site. And it was, it was really interesting read. And then I actually enjoyed the articles within the article where they were tagging Wendy's um, and talking mm. about how, you know, what Wendy's does and how, because Wendy's is very much known for their snarkiness when it comes on to social media and just kind of trolling people and calling them out. And it was really interesting to read, especially there was one article in there where the um, woman that oversaw social media, uh, the day that she had just said something, and she tweeted, I forget what the tweet was exactly, but how it blew up and how it turned into people finding her house and finding her parents, where her parents live. It was just like this whole thing that it just spiraled out of control. And she was literally just sitting on her couch, just tweeting away. Like a lot of us, when we do social media, we're just, you know, firing off a tweet real quick and not really expecting some major repercussions, but um, she did. And it was, it was interesting to read that angle too. Cause I love social media, but it also scares the crap out of me. <laughs> Sometimes. And it's just, but it's your job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, why don't you walk away from this can? It's my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is such a, you know, you write a line with it, don't you? Mm -hmm. And, and, and see like, you know, Wendy's pushing like that. I know, I know producer Missy's been doing, um, again, you know, I think you know, we've been having conversations about voice lately. Right. And, you know, you know, figuring that out for, for, touchy subjects when it, when it comes that way on like you know history and, and things like that so it's interesting to look at it, it was it was cool to see the point and the porn hub uh, article was a nice um follow-up to that butterfly effect yes. podcast that we both listened to um too so and i guess along with that i should plug the other one that the same guy did i got to listen to it i didn't know if you had a chance to no yet. i haven't yet it's the last days of august it's about uh porn star august ames mm -hmm. um oh, yeah. who was quote bu bullied to death yep. um over some comments she unfortunate comments she made on social media and they explore a lot it's not just about twitter bullying in the end um it's kind of a it's in the vein of a murder mystery but it's not a murder mystery um just a lot of exploration of the people she's around and, and again more kind of exploration of that porn industry um which is very interesting um sometimes tragic but um but but generally um, you get to little, know a little bit more about what's going on out there. So I definitely recommend that if that is in your uh, wheelhouse there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Chilla, uh, of the things that you have over here, uh, anything you want to uh, uh, touch anything on? Anything I want to touch on. Um, did you did you hear about the, the Galaxy Fold? I heard it did not it, go well. The, the fold is on hold. The fold it's a, is on oh. hold. It's, it's a broken dream. Uh, the, the puns, the puns they're coming up with are pretty fun. Wow, the new show, um, the new show that I listened to was not as punny about this <laughs> as uh, apparently everybody else on the internet, according to this. It, so the a number of review units were shipped last week. Yeah, for news and social media, tech coverage etc awesome cast didn't get one but um we're still waiting we're well, still waiting we for were on the second wave and apparently we're not getting one now i don't know um interestingly enough there was nothing in the box that said don't remove the screen protector <laughs> and people were removing which is the screen protector and then their screens were breaking and and samsung fired back and said well you weren't supposed to remove the screen we'll make sure we put in information in and, there and here's some of the visuals of that screen protector and the damage um this is from and uh, the verges uh review actually yeah. uh, the, over here the then for uh, so they were kind of blaming that there's the screen protector removed you can see obviously it wasn't that easy to get off mm. um but 
even for people that didn't remove the screen protector, it was still peeling back. The screens were shutting down. The, the, I don't want to say they were, the LCD was cracking, but it looked like a kind of a cracked LCD underneath. Um, it was like worn. Yeah, there was horrible the ones seen. tearing of the, like there was a, a, an image or video on that of like them trying to scroll down a page. Mm -hmm. The video tearing, like when you're used to, and I don't care what like device a it is. Like a bad Android device. Like a bad, a bad Android device. Mm -hmm. um, the, it was just tearing. The, not, the, the, the reviews were not coming in well, and <laughs> <No>. Samsung <laughs> has decided to delay the launch until at least May. So it was not just ready. this week. Just, just not ready. So, yeah. so they delayed to May. Hopefully they can fix these things. The interesting thing is I'm seeing early commentary about the Huawei device having the same problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a reason why Apple isn't the first to put certain any technologies out, out <laughs> it, right? Yeah, which which is, a, I mean, so as a retired, again, one of my other former jobs was I used to design software and hardware. How many things have you retired from? <sighs> Several. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> My, my, my life has been a long stream of, hey, I wonder if I can do that. Let me try to do that for a few <laughs> That's years. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> I mean, That's the way to be, man. That's how I became a wrestler. I mean, Mav is was, living his best life. Yeah, um, I yes. mean, now I'm an English teacher and scholar. and I, That's how I became a photographer. That's how I became a wrestler. We need, so, to, connect, we need to connect you with Professor Buzzkill. Um, I'm aware of Professor Oh, Buzzkill. yeah? Yeah. He'll be, he'll be on the show in about a month. Oh. I don't know if I've ever met him. But, yes, I'm aware of, I'm, I'm aware of Professor Buzzkill. It's history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I... Um, there is a there is an advantage to being your market leader, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there is an advantage to not being. And Apple very much always takes a lot of they they, they take some 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 flack for mm -hmm. for so they get some heat for oh well, Android had this two years ago and it's like yeah but it didn't work mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 now to be fair to the people who are Android fans. Mm -hmm. um, or actually, I shouldn't even say Android. To be fair to people who are very big Google fans, mm -hmm. Google everything is in perpetual beta test. Oh, yeah. There are many, many things that Google will release that are in beta test for years. And, you know, maybe it will come out of beta test. Maybe it won't. I don't remember if they... I think they did eventually remove the beta logo from Gmail. That took like five or six years. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. left it there because... You know, we'll work because then you know there's everybody a was using it. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get out, we'll get out of it eventually. And yeah, and Apple, Apple tries not to do that. And they're not, you know, I don't work there. I don't owe them anything. They're not perfect. They make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Apple Maps was a big was a big one that is Apple Maps. Mm -hmm. People are still complaining about that keyboard. It's so. yeah, and 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 Maps is better now. There, mm -hmm. but there are they try to make sure they're sure. And mm -hmm. and I'm a bright guy. I mean, I've. I, I've done this sort of thing for a while, but I don't want to sit there and work out trivial details in order to make my phone talk to my watch and talk to my computer. Mm -hmm. I like that I take it out of the box and you know plug it in and plug but, in a home pod. But you're and, yeah, but you're at the point where you're doing that with your home, but mm -hmm. you know what you're getting into and you know it's not prime time for anybody yet. Right. Right. You know, versus a hey, I want a phone out of my pocket at work so I don't have to deal with all this other stuff. Right, I'm willing to. I'm willing to work harder to be able to. I mean, there's no reason I need to be able to turn my lights on by talking to them. Mm -hmm. That is, I've been turning light switches on and off for 45 years. I can handle it. <laughs> I can, you know, like I, I've worked. The, I've worked those do, things out. Do I hand this off to a computer yet? No, but I. But but I love that I can. Mm -hmm. I, I I love that I know when my cat walks up the stairs because the motion sensor detects her and turns the light on for her. She doesn't care. She can see in the dark. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Hey, Katie, uh, why why is Big Bird going to tell me to <laughs> stop using my phone? So um, PSA, it's a, there's a PSA, there's a group called Device Free Dinner, hashtag Device Free Dinner, dinner Campaign. Um, they Before they had a campaign with Will Ferrell's distracted dad on his phone at the table, ignoring his family's conversation. You might remember that from before. But um, Apple CEO Tom Cook is kind of working on this whole thing. And now they brought you in mean, Sesame Street. Oh. Tim Cook. Sorry, I said Tom. I don't know. Uh, Tim Apple. Tim, Tom Apple. Tom, Tom Apple. Tom Apple. <laughs> Tom Apple. Um, but this time around, uh, they're working with Sesame Street. So Sesame Street, essentially, they're all putting their phones away at dinner time. Oh, a, a short called Device Free Dinner, yeah, it looks like. Cute? So everybody, yeah. you know, puts stuff away. And then at the end, Cookie Monster's <laughs> still on his phone. And then at 
and they're like, come on, guys, and he eats the phone. So <laughs> yeah. That's great. Hey, Big Bird's got a nice uh, uh, protector on his iPad, it looks like, too. So also, also the, the size of uh, puppet, puppet able uh, <laughs> uh, devices, it looks like. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of um, they kind of need to to a point, mm-hmm. right? Because I mean, we're not uh, socially ready for all this technology that's been thrust on us, and even parents are still ad- you know, adjusting to it themselves mm-hmm. to be able to teach. Well, they're even talking about that the fact of having the cell phone, even if you're not on it, just being within the vicinity of you interfering with your conversations. Mm -hmm. So like totally putting it away to a completely different spot uh, makes a world of difference. And I understand that because there's a big difference when this is next to me and this is like sitting away from me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, oh, what's maybe I even like the reflection off the screen sometimes makes me think I have a message. Yeah. And you're like, oh, what was that? Was that the thing? Or that phantom buzz. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Like, that's that's amazing. Or you're, you're, you think your leg's vibrating and the yeah. phone isn't even in your pocket. And I get that on my watch now, too. Because like, I swear that thing just buzzed on my arm, right? Mm-hmm. And you look and there's no notification or anything. See, I get the opposite. The weird thing about the watch is, and I know it's me, but there's times where it buzzes and I don't notice it for like 45 minutes. And then because it buzzed on my wrist, the phone never vibrated. Like, mm-hmm. it's just... Biggest, getting acclimated the biggest thing i worry about is um because i have cameras here in the studio i get the, i had the notification set overnight right so every motion every time the train goes by here you know or there's a light flash or, or a screensaver goes off or something like i get a notification or a sound or something right if there's lightning um so i'm getting those no- notifications like every 15 minutes all night and sometimes i don't turn my watch into do not disturb mode and realizing and i don't want to take my watch off because i'm doing sleep tracking with it so I'm just wondering, like, am I doing some kind of um, um, sensory neurological damage or 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 kind of um, downplaying that, right? Becoming desensitized to it. Yeah, you're training yourself doing to it not all night. It. If I can sleep through it, also is it affecting my sleep in general? Right, mm-hmm. you know, is another problem. So that's something I've that's that's just something I've been thinking of uh, going into this too. So. Um, well, Big Bird will tell us. Big Big, Big Bird will set us straight. So, Big Bird. <laughs> yeah, Big Bird. What have I screwed up? Um, anyways, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend in uh, in media as well out there on the West Coast, and he's a, a contributor and uh, is often in our chat room here as well. I'll see him in a couple weeks when I head out to California again. Alex Cars with Alex Cars dot media K H R S. He's putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital products, uh, projects. Uh, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Uh, go check him out at alexcars.media. Uh, done a lot of great uh, t-shirts that have been featured uh, amongst uh, pro wrestlers out there, even on pro wrestling television uh, as well. And uh, he does some great stuff. It actually got a lot of swag from one of the wrestling products. It's it's like some awesome high quality stuff. I need to talk to him about how he's sourcing some of his um his uh, swag out there too. Because I mean I know he doesn't have a scarehouse budget there, Katie. Because <laughs> I know you got your sources, but uh, but uh, he's got he's got some really cool stuff for like you know the indie wrestling level like uh, we're on over here or the indie podcast level like we are here at the podcast go check well, it out i got some indie wrestlers on my level too but you I, okay you do have some indie wrestlers on your level yes you have been you have been sourcing some stuff you've yes. been doing some some um <laughs> uh consulting i think you yes. can say too yeah. <laughs> so um, that's that's kind of an interesting thing I, I i hear about like hey where did you get that cool chapstick Oh, Katie hooked me up. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, uh, Mav, thank you so much for being part yeah. of the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, where can people check out what you're into these days or what the next thing you decide to be into? <laughs> well, my, <laughs> you, know, you have two choices. You can, you can come and enroll in one of my classes. I, I teach at Duquesne University. But um, mostly what I do when I'm not, well, mostly what I do is I've got my blog, mm-hmm. which is chrismaverick.com or twitter at chris maverick and i have my own podcast where uh, so um i'm the main host and i've got three co-hosts of a show called vox popcast v-o-x-p-o-p-c-a-s-t popcast instead of podcast where we are a weekly academic discussion of popular culture with drinking and swearing that is fantastic yeah we would there's some topic every week we talk about this week it's going to be all about oh yeah yeah 
so that's yeah on last week uh, like or, the area scene yeah the area ah. scene if, if you uh, I, I try to use um relatively work safe mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some subjects but it's the area scene if you watch game of thrones last night you know what that is we know what that is <laughs> um so yeah so that that's on my blog and on and on um vox podcast if you pull that up next week's show i think is going to be well next week's show is already recorded next week's show is going to be about um, a conference that I was just at where we talked about comics and video games academically. Yeah. I mean, this is the best job that I've had really because yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I liked wrestling, but you know, sometimes people, people hit you in the head with a chair and that kind of ruins your day. Whereas, you know, right now I get paid to like talk about people having sex and funny books. That's like mm-hmm. my job right now. <laughs> <laughs> is, That's is, like I, I literally spent last week, last week I got sent to Washington DC to talk about the way that Rob Liefeld draws boobs in comic books. Wow. That's my job. <laughs> did, did, did the lack of feet come up? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the, the very, I'll tell you, the very last word of my presentation is, um, and she also lacks feet. <laughs> that, that was the end of that was the end of the presentation and you find out yeah. <laughs> who are those fans in yes. the audience. <laughs> yeah. So that, so that was, um, that's what, I, but that's the, that's the, um, yeah, I'll toss a joke here and there when I'm doing it academically. Mm-hmm. Any of my students who've seen who I've taught, I tell jokes in the classroom all the time. Well, the podcast is me and three other academics, and then we have a guest every week, a guest or two every week, and we'll have a topic. So next week, we'll be talking about Avengers. Mm-hmm. Avengers is coming out, so we're going to probably talk about something like, um, what does it mean to conclude a cinematic universe? Because that's never happened before. I mean... It's going to happen twice this year because we're going to have Star Wars at the end of the year. But at no point has anybody, things have just sort of run out of steam. Mm -hmm. But there's never before been an idea where, hey, we've got this 20 film series. Mm -hmm. And last year when Infinity War came out, we spent the entire thing with, what does it mean to essentially put television in the movie theaters Mm -hmm. where you're having a cinematic universe that's not linear like a TV show is, but it is sprawling. It's not like like James Bond or Star Wars. It was something different. So we analyzed that for a while. And this year we're going to talk about what does it mean to end one. And I know it's not really ending. There's going to be more movies. But, right. but, it, but it is a logical conclusion to this storyline that I've been watching for 10 years. And then, you know, and so I get a bunch of smart friends a- around. And the nice thing about academics is, you know, we have to be serious most of the time because we're people talk like this because we're doing the official, mm-hmm. you know, I'm talking about <laughs> Faulkner. And, and I don't like doing that. Instead, I'd rather talk about Batman. Um, so, so I, I talk comics and movies and, um, my co-host Wayne is a comic guy. My co-host Katia is, um, she's a, she's, she's into video games. She knows everything about video games. The, the, the joke on the show is she's there because I'm a boy and boys don't know anything about video games. Katia knows everything. Like recite, she will recite for you in intricate detail, the plot of every Zelda. Every Zelda, oh. every system, awesome. every, wow. <laughs> from the wow. beginning, <laughs> she knows it all. Um, that's what her dissertation's on. And then Hannah is our Victorianist who also um, lo- likes um, action movies, and she, so it's it's a fun show. This is great. And 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 Hannah's into into board games and you know and D and D. So we we just talk about whatever nerdy thing we decide to talk that about. Is, that that is getting in the list. I can't believe and, I, and I, I can't believe everything. I haven't come across this yet. Yeah, I've been Wait. doing it for about a, uh, well a little over a year. Fit, 54 Four episodes is next week. I just subscribed. Yeah, okay. yeah I, think, I think we're all, I think everybody just subscribed to that yeah. right now. So Good. We need the views. <laughs> Go check Write that out. Write us five-star reviews it's on the iTunes perfect thing something. inside for, uh, uh, you know, next to this podcast. <laughs> also, uh, John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. On, at Chilla on the Twitters. ChillaTech.net. Following Mr. Mav everywhere he is. <laughs> I, just, I just, every time he said something else, I'm like, okay, bookmarked, followed, I'm, followed. Subscribe. <laughs> yeah. He's catching cool. up. Yeah. He's catching up. Yeah, I, I'm, it, my name's unique enough that it's weird because, like, if you find a Chris, uh, not on Instagram. On Instagram, I'm Chris Dot Maverick. There's some guy who's Chris Maverick without the dot. That I don't know how that happened because, uh, and I bet he's doing nothing. He's interesting. doing nothing with it. He's completely That's uninteresting, and, and it's That's so annoying because I'm Chris Maverick literally everywhere else. Hey, like, man, I'm a better Chris Maverick than, <laughs> than you. Can I please have the username? I've thought about it. Yeah, Katie Dutters. Hi. Uh, uh, Scarehouse and Rogue, yep. Blazer Grounds, and some super mystery thing that you'll be hearing about very soon. Yes. 
stuff and things. It's always stuff. There's and always things. there's always plans and and shenanigans going on. So many. We had gobbleritos today, so it's yeah. <gasps> <laughs> it's gobblerito day. Really? Yeah, I, the one day in the spring that they return. So I didn't oh, realize it that. comes Did, out of hiding. Jeez. Did, did they announce that ahead of time? Mm-hmm. It now. goes on our haunt calendar. It's that important to us. It goes on your haunt calendar? Yeah, like It you. should. It's is delicious. This, is this an outing for you guys? <laughs> yes. Yep. All right. mm-hmm. Check it out That's my Instagram. Great. Kate Marie PGH. Have a group shot. <laughs> I apologize. I think you've been slightly out of focus this whole time. That's fine. It's, okay. it's, it's a blur. Though. It works out perfect because it looks like she's like in a newsroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's yeah, like a screen people, behind her. People working yeah. behind her. Or it's, just focusing, or it's just focusing on the monitor behind you. I'm yeah, not I'm sure. Like, here we go. It might be, it might be stuck good. from the last shoot. I don't know. Focus. But uh, anyways, uh, Sorgatron <laughs> on the Twitter. So go check out a lot of great stuff. Hey, please also support Post Industrial. Uh, they just started. Uh, we, we are being featured on their podcast section over there. Uh, have been for a little bit. Um, they're doing a Kickstarter to roll out their print editions coming up in June. Please go follow that now. I, I had a great conversation with um, a metal worker that's doing the knives for one of the um, giveaways for the Kickstarter levels. Um, and I just, her and um, um, uh, Scott McTaggart's uh, partner with uh, Colonel's uh, uh, that, that he talked about a little bit, uh, Olga, uh, we're just going on about blacksmithing and, and you know, I, just like, and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I don't understand blacksmithing, but I'll like listen to the two of them. I literally wa- listen to the two of them without even inserting any conversation, just talk about blacksmithing for about 10 minutes at this mm-hmm. party. But anyways, go go follow. The point is, go find postindustrial.com <laughs> uh, is the thing. Subscribe to all their social medias in the newsletter, and please support the Kickstarter. Some really good um, good journalism um, happening there. Between, uh, I, I think we're very fortunate to be working with a lot of very good up-and-coming um, you know, deep in journalism things, uh, like, you know, doing some work with Public Source and our friends at Pittsburgh Current that are on this uh, uh, podcast network as well. You know, some good alternatives coming out there that are, uh, I think, pushing the right buttons uh, as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, producer Missy. Thank you, our chat room hanging out with us all night. We'll see you guys again. And next week, where our guest will in the studio will be John Carmen returning. Yay. That usually, I mean... We'll usually there'll be probably a Pornhub story or two. The guy there. from Jersey, <laughs> what? The guy, but didn't he get confused for some other John Carmen? On oh, not the other John Carmen. What was the other John Carmen? I thought he was from Jersey. Yeah, it's not John Carmen from Jersey. John Carmen from uh, Pittsburgh by way of Queens. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about ride sharing because he's been doing some stuff I haven't been doing lately, and I'm really interested to find out how that's working out for him. We'll see you guys next team next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.